Welcome everyone. We are back for another edition of Manifest Mondays and today I have a very special guest and a very good friend of mine, Maya Azusena. And welcome Maya. Thank you. <laughs> and if you guys don't know Maya, she is an amazing singer, songwriter, and um, Grammy award winning artist. And she's traveled all over the world. And she just got back from a weekend at Omega where she was um, a special guest at the Women in Power retreat. Um, she's been on MTV in the show Made where she mentored a student who wanted to become a singer. Um, she's just up to amazing things. She helped um, form the MDG5 um, network, which she'll explain what that is too if you're not familiar with it. So, welcome Maya. Thanks for having me. <laughs> So I figured we'll get started just by um, telling everyone your story about how you got into music. I mean, I started singing when I was very young. It was very instinctual from the age of four. Mm -hmm. I was very conscious of it and was rehearsing songs and, you know, ready to be a singer. But the turning point for me as where music became a mission, mm -hmm. um, or where, where I kind of like focused into a mission, um, was when September 11th happened in New York. Hmm. Um, there is this overwhelming feeling when there's a catastrophe, you know, um, of mo momentary um, helplessness, yeah. you know, because it's so much bigger than you, you're an individual, like how, how, do, I, how do I stop genocide? How do, mm -hmm. how do I help? tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their homes or, or been killed, uh, you know, in, a, yeah. in an instant, you know, what do I do? And Im immediately after that moment of helplessness, I had this surge and this incredible, like, need uh, that was like, I have to sing. I have to sing. I have to. I have to get to a mic. It, like no matter what, I have to sing now. People mm. need to hear me sing right now. And it was like this overwhelming understanding of music as a tool for for activism and as a tool for healing. Mm. And it became much more crystal clear to me as a mission at that time. Yeah. So going forward, I've treated music like you know, uh, I wield it like a weapon, I treat it like a tool for activism and for raising awareness and for helping others in any way that I can. Awesome. And what I love about you is that you have always kind of done it on your own. You're not with a major label, you're with an independent label. So for someone who, you know, is like you, who is wanting to kind of develop their own career in the arts, whatever that may be for them, you know, who's just starting out, do you have some sort of advice on what do you do when you're doing it on your own and how do you kind of deal with not being overwhelmed and be paying okay. bills? Okay, <laughs> guarantee you, you will be overwhelmed. I mean, you will just be overwhelmed. But um, once you get over that fact, um, it's just like lifting the veil away from this mystery of, of how do I do it and understand the couple of points. One, as an artist, um, a lot of times there's this notion that we're waiting to be discovered and we're waiting to mm. be accepted and we're waiting to be put on by somebody. Mm -hmm. And my advice is if you're an artist, be an artist. Act as an artist. Produce as an artist. Produce things. I love that because that's one of the things I talk about in terms of a tool for manifesting is act as if. You know? Act, act if, if you're a singer, don't talk about singing. Sing. Do it. If you're a painter, mm -hmm. don't talk about painting paint. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. And it, that in and of itself draws uh, not just energy, but it, it, it by you simply doing it, you cause the world around you to respond. Yes. You know, I say like, um, if I go somewhere and someone says, what do you do? And I say, well, you know, I'm trying, you know, to be a singer. Then the person walks away and just, just right. totally that evaporates from the mind. If you meet somebody and you look them in the eye and you say, I'm a singer, and you give them your card, they yes. walk away with the visual image of you in their mind and say, oh yeah, that's, 
That's Maya the singer. Exactly. Why? Because you told them right. that's what you I are. Have chills. That's what that you are. So and it. and then then you add to that. I just sort of um, started treating my career like a small business. Mm -hmm. Again, stop this waiting for someone to discover me, and and just said, well, if it's a small business, all I need to do is, you know, open up the shop. You know, right. get out there and and be in the world and act as if it is a job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you treat your 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 gift as a hobby, you will receive hobby results. But somebody that wants a career must treat their gift like a career yes. and invest the time that it takes to operate a career. Yes. And um and you will get career results. Yeah. So there's a couple of thoughts that I wanted to throw in. Mm -hmm. One, um, a person may say, well, I have a day job and I'm trying to get this other thing off the ground. What, yes. How do I manage that? Mm -hmm. Where do I find the, how do I get that into, to, you know, right. model how do I find for, the time to do for what small, I really love? Right. One, treat it like you have two full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. Because if I were to open up a store that was open once every three weeks, uh, from 5.15 to 6.05, um, guess how many people would shop there? Right. Consistency is the absolute key. Yes. If it is only open 20 minutes a day, but it's open the same exact 20 minutes every single day, you train people to expect it. Right. And you train people that this is something that's operating and, totally. and they, they draw to it and, yes. they, and they patronize your store mm -hmm. or your career. Right. And so you've a, a newsletter, which is awesome that you Thank send you. out. Yeah, definitely. And one of the other things that we were talking about earlier was um, for people who, you know, feel like they are working on their project, but things just aren't really happening. It's, it's going so slowly. When is it going to, you know, come to fruition? What kind of advice do you have, you know, for someone like that? These are my thoughts on that. Um, one, having realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we feel entitled because we have a talent of some sort, so we're entitled to instantaneous success. Yeah. Because why? We're, we live in an ATM society. You punch in four numbers and you get everything <laughs> right away. You go to a fast food line, you get your food in 60 seconds that you didn't cook. Right. You know. So. At the end of the day, we really have to create realistic expectations and understand that the most real things in the world are, are organic, mm -hmm. and organic things grow with time. Um, so what happens, I think, is that a lot of times people um, uh, give up and lose heart before things manifest right when they're about to. So I have this uh, kind of like metaphor that I use to help me, yeah. which is, you know, imagine that you used all the money that you had to buy seeds mm -hmm. and then you're down in the ground and you're raking the soil with your fingers and use all of your energy all of your physical energy all of your financial resources and you dig and you dig and you 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 know you make these rows and you plant these seeds and and and, and you do all this physical labor and when you're done yeah. putting every ounce of your energy into it mm. All of your being goes into this thing that you care so much about. You stand there and you look out at this field of dirt. <laughs> and you're like, is this all I get for all of my hard work? A field of dirt. I just gave everything I had. I just put all of my energy, all of my money, all of my everything into this field of dirt. And what the farmer knows mm. is that you plant seeds and then there's a process before it manifests, before your crop grows up. And what happens is that at that moment a lot of people walk away mm. and or give up or lose heart mm. and we lose sight of the real things in the world, in the planet, are organic and have an organic process. Right. So what a farmer knows is yeah. that it's not a field of dirt. Right. You know, this is their handiwork. and they know that once you plant these seeds, if you don't walk away from it, if you nurture it, and if you stick with it, it yes. is taking root underneath the surface. Right. And you've got to stick it out until it starts to pop up and you start to see these little buds. Yes. And then if you stick it out and you nurture that, you, you have trees. And then yes. you stick that out and then it bears fruit. Yes. But it is really important to know in your heart of hearts that you planted seeds. Right. If you planted seeds, something right. will necessarily grow. Yeah. But the key is to, after planting the seeds, 
like giving having realistic expectations mm -hmm. of the fact that there's a process of growth right and, and not going. walking away and stay there and 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 you know keep giving it energy you know yes. you don't just oh give the farm to somebody else because uh you know just totally. stick it out <laughs> and then there's a crop that yes. comes eventually and it's not an indefinite it is a cycle it's a process mm -hmm. it will come but yes. you gotta stay i love that yeah, and it's so obvious too with where you're at, you know, in your career. You've you've always kind of kept going, and now I feel like you just you're further and further along. You just came back from this um, Women in Power conference at Omega, which is amazing, yes, and you're going to be on TEDx Women, which is awesome. I'm so so very um, honored. Yeah. Yeah, and I I wanted to also talk to you about kind of how community has shaped where you are today and the relationships you know, that you've made, because um, I don't know if you remember, we actually met in the studio with Stephen Marley years ago. I know, it's so crazy, because <laughs> so we have our own connection now, so it's like I forget that that's the, our original, like, you know, meeting point. Yeah. I mean, collaborating, uh, co collaboration and community are two things that I find to be very important and have actually philosophically been a big part of my approach to my mm -hmm. career. Um, you know, when in the, in the absence of corporate backing, in the absence of major budget, in mm -hmm. the absence of a huge team, you know, being very do-it-yourself, DIY, yes. um, I really acknowledge the power of the people around me. Yes. And every time that you are in front of or next to another person, that person is an opportunity. Yes. And I don't mean to say that you should be opportunistic, but that just understand the value that we each have things going on in our lives and there are probably connectors that yes. you know that if you if you pay Attention. respect to yeah. it and you explore it, there are things that you have to offer and that I have to offer that complement each other. Um, and, uh, and as uh, philosophically going back to the power of collaboration, mm -hmm. um, you know, the very first time I booked my gigs in New York, um, I thought, well, hey, you know, I'll do a show by myself and bring my 15 fans. Mm -hmm. But what if I do a show and ask you to do the show with me right. and you bring your 15 fans and then together we have... 30 fans yes. and you know this makes sense when you look at it like math it's like you take two things you put them mm -hmm. together and it's a larger thing right. but it's like really really cool to remember that when applying it to your ideas of building something a business and yes. uh, or a dream and understand that the, the power of, of collaborating it and the value we have in each other yes. and helping each other and being open to that because it gives back, you know? It does, and I, I love that too, because, you know, uh, we, there's so much talk about this age of, the feminine age that we're entering right now, um, and coming just back from the Women in Power retreat at Omega. I think there is really great power in collaborating, especially with other women, and helping each other out, you know, so that we can build even bigger projects. Which leads me to your MDG5 project. I'd love to hear about what that is. Okay, um, MDG5 uh, stands for a Millennium Development Goal Number 5, mm -hmm. which is maternal health. Mm -hmm. So the UN had a, a summit in, 2000, uh, in, in the year 2000 to um, kind of itemize poverty into to eight categories. And those eight categories would be a way to systematically improve poverty by the year 2015. Mm -hmm. So those eight categories became known as the Millennium Development Goals, one through eight. Mm -hmm. And number five is maternal health. Uh, so a very good friend, speaking of collaboration, uh, and, and in fact at the time, we weren't very good friends. Mm. We were just meeting each other on a mutual respect basis, yeah. and she knew my work and I knew hers. Uh, so Lisa Russell, who is an Emmy winning filmmaker mm -hmm. and documentarian and a specialist in, much, in, in women's health, yeah. um, asked me to co-found this multimedia website with her. Awesome. And the multimedia website uses all different mediums of art to raise awareness for better maternal health around the world. Awesome. And it's a user-friendly uh, interactive site that allows people to go and make mashup videos mm. and then click and share them you know, with your social network. Awesome. So it's a really, really cool tool 
um, but it also just speaks to collaboration. The site in and of itself is a cross-cultural yes, thing. I love that. You know? And where can we go to see that? What's the website? It's actually mdg5.com. Awesome. Very cool. And, uh, and then speaking of collaboration, yeah. you know, I've been going back and forth to, to Croatia. I love um, this. Actually, I, it's not, you know, they have these t-shirts that say I'm famous in Japan. <laughs> well, I, I don't have one, but I need to make one that says I'm famous in Croatia. <laughs> it's true. I love this story. <laughs> Where you don't undervalue, do not undervalue people. Like, I got a fan letter years ago, you know, broken English, and I read it, and, you know, the average person might have just said, ha-ha, and just kept it moving, and I yes. responded, and I said, you know, I saw it as an opportunity, and I yes. said, hey, I'd love to come to Croatia, and to this day, that person that wrote that fan letter is like family to me, mm -hmm. to me now. He has, you know, overseen all of my business affairs in Croatia, mm -hmm. and he introduced my music to the number one rock artist in, in, in former Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. and Giboni ended up inviting me, that's the name of the artist, right. to, to sing a song with him. So I recorded my parts in Brooklyn, right. he recorded his parts in Croatia, and that song collaboration ended up winning two of their Grammys. Yeah, that so it's so just like, incredible. Just, like you don't that. ever know where it can go, yes. but you have to believe in the possibility of collaborating and, and, and that there is a community in, internationally, right. not just your physical community in your neighborhood, but there's an international community. Yeah, and I think it's paying attention to the synchronicities of, you know, like who is around you that, you know, if you are doing what you love, you attract the right people in the right circumstances. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so amazing who shows up in your life when you're working on something. And that's like how we, when we met, you know, <laughs> we, we ran into each other at this We studio. kept running into each other, yeah. Yes, and then we kept running into each other in the city after that. And we were like, what do you do? What do you do? We need to know each other, you know? And, and so when everyone goes to my website, they need to know that <laughs> she actually designed it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then that led to this friendship, which is mm -hmm. so amazing. Yeah. So it's like, you just, you never know. It's such and it's also important not to undervalue yourself. Mm. You know, because sometimes it, you think, oh, well, why would anyone want to work with me? And then you undervalue yourself. And you know what? It's like, you know, everybody has something to offer. Yes. And if you have a vision for something, you know, you've got to believe that enough to tell other people about it. Right, exactly. You know? Yes, acting as if and just putting yourself out there. Yeah. So, so key. Mm -hmm. So another awesome thing that Maya did was she was just featured on MTV's Made show, which she'll tell you about. She was mentoring a high school student there who wanted to become a musician, right? Yeah, What? so check this out. So uh, MTV Made is one of the maybe two reality shows that I would ever consider even being a part of yes. <laughs> and um, it's really wonderful and the concept is to take a professional in a field and pair them with a teenager that has both a goal and an obstacle that they're trying mm. to overcome and so the professional in their in the field of their interest helps them through this you know obstacle and helps them to achieve a goal awesome. so I was mentoring a young woman in Oklahoma a suburb to Oklahoma City <laughs> who has terrible terrible like debilitating stage fright mm. and yet wants to be a singer mm. and um, so I spent five weeks with her life coaching her mm. and helping her to con you know have an actual you know vocal technique yes. and uh, it was really cool her name is Meg and I'm so proud of her and and seeing her transform in a matter of weeks and you know understanding like wow um, she trusted me to take her on a journey to her next level yes. and that was really fantastic for the both of us and so rewarding mm -hmm. um, but I really have a lot of faith in her and I'm glad to see her having faith in herself now and not letting fear uh, you know prevent her from you know Going out flying yeah. yeah and 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 also um, you know trusting herself to 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 manifest I mean yeah. this is all integrated it all makes yeah. sense together. and that, that also ties into one of the things we talk about here at Queen of Manifestation which is finding a mentor you know, and it's so helpful in whatever field you're looking to go into, really teaming up with someone who's been there or is doing what you want to do so that you can kind of learn how they did it, you know? And the other thing which is cool, I, I was thinking is like, like as much as I learn and therefore can be a teacher, 
I'm also always wanting to be a student. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in situations where there's anyone there to challenge you to a greater you, right. so that you can be a student, I, I challenge you to, to put yourself in an environment where you're being stretched. So that you know, yes. so that you can continue to be a student and, and therefore grow. continue to grow. I love that. You know, be 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 available to that. Yes. You know. Yeah. Don't stagnate. Don't become you know uh, c content uh, with the status quo. Yes. And leave your potential untapped. Yes, I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. You had such great advice today. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with us. And thank you all for watching. So again, if you want to find out more about Maya, it's mayaazusena.com. And um, yeah, you can check out more videos here at queenofmanifestation.com. This has been a fabulous Manifest Monday. Thanks, you guys. And thank you, Maya. Mwah. All right. Bye.